Okay, our next project is going to be the preparation of a class 2 resin. Um, here's a diagram. This is essentially set for a foil. <coughs> I'm going to give you an idea. We're going to be working on an upper first bicuspid. Uh, traditional class, uh, traditional GV black preparation designs call for extension of one third of the way the, for, of the cusp tip. That means if you were to measure the distance from the central groove to the tip of the cusp, it would be one third of that distance. Uh, traditional GV black design calls for one half of the way of, a, of the grooves. But we live in an age somewhat removed from GV black's age, and so we'll make it a little bit more conservative than that. So we're going to be opening up at about two millimeters wide. Uh, through the central groove area, extending along through the grooves a little bit, and then we'll be troughing along this side just slightly. If you look at the tooth laterally, you'll see kind of that boxed out area on the mesial where we'll be prepping. Then we'll be opening a breaking contact on both the facial and the lingual side. This is kind of a photograph of a, of a class two preparation. traditional class 2 preparation, more or less what we'll be cutting for. Um, so cut out through the top, troughing on the one side, and um, quite often these days we'll do more conservative preparations called trough preparations, uh, where we just go down through the marginal ridge and open up the area of decay. But, but for today's exercise we'll be doing something more along the line of this type of preparation where we go through or follow the grooves and then go through the lateral borders. Okay, we're going to go ahead and prepare. I've drawn in pencil an outline of the preparation we'll be making. This is our high-speed drill. You can see the burr is about a millimeter in diameter. That'll help give us a little bit of a guide. And the burr is about four millimeters in depth, the total shank of the diamond. So, here we go. We're going to go right down the center. Let me turn the water off. Going back and forth to the central groove. As you can see, and we'll take it down to a depth of about three millimeters. And we'll extend up into those grooves slightly. Once we get right over to the edge here, you'll see I'm going to start to trough back and forth. We'll take that to about double the depth that we had. Um, through the central portion. Now we have a little plate of tooth intact um, so that I don't bump the adjacent. Preparation. <clears throat> Just about one. Since I've dropped down to about that level, I'm going to just come through and break contact. So I'll start to move a little bit distal. Gently work my way through until until I open the contact. Like that. Trying to be careful not to bump the adjacent tooth. In real life, you of course have two separate teeth. In a stone model, the teeth are physically connected. So a lot of that opening the contact in real life would be different and a little simpler, actually. Preparation. I'm going to grab some hand instruments. Okay, we're going to see we're just going to take our hand instruments and clean up the interior here just a little bit. And we're going to 
open up our contact I'm using a um, hollow back instrument with the hand I'm going to remove that last little bit of stone that uh, connects me to the next tooth over close to what we want to accomplish before we restore. I'm going to get some restoration material and we're going to show you how to go about restoring it. Alright, in a normal, um, in, a, in a real mouth, of course, we'd be etching and bonding and going through all those steps. We'd also be placing a band between these teeth, but being a stone model, that's not really practical. So we're going to go ahead and restore. This is our composite gun. It has a little cartridge of composite in here. So we're going to take and insert a small amount of composite into the box area. And we're going to take what's called a plastic instrument. It's got kind of a, a plugger kind of end. And we'll just gently massage that in. We usually like to keep that first layer of composite in the box no thicker than about a millimeter. So if I've got extra, I'll just take that out of there. And I've got the first layer in in the box. Just like that. And I'm going to take my carrying line. That's this thing. I'll point it at the composite. And harden up. Now we're going to take our second layer of composite and fill in the remainder of the preparation. And I'm just going to kind of plug that into the hole. Now I'm going to use the flat end of that instrument begin shaping my marginal ridge and to begin forming my anatomy. Ideally what we'd like to do here is form most of the anatomy by hand before we harden it so we don't have to use drills. So you can see I'm using the flat end to kind of form that distal pit and the mesial pit and using the flat end to kind of scoop around here and form my occlusal embrasure and the shape of my marginal ridge and I've got what I want Form that deeper groove right down through the center. We kind of got what we want there. Then we'll harden it. Put the light directly at it and blast it away. At this point in a live patient, we would adjust the occlusion, check the contact tension, and polish. But for the purposes of this exercise, we probably won't be doing that. We'll just call it glitch right here. Unless you have significant flaws in your anatomy, in which case we'll 